Alabama's governor has signed a bill into law aimed at protecting IVF patients and hospitals from prosecution following a near three week pause in treatments. And why New York is deploying hundreds of National Guard members to city subways. The morning rundown starts now. From the Straight Arrow News Studio, bringing the stories that matter to you from across the United States and around the world, this is the Morning Rundown. Today is Thursday, March 7th. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kara Rucker. Alabama's governor has signed into law IVF protections following the state Supreme Court ruling that frozen embryos are children. That controversial ruling resulted in hospitals putting a pause on IVF treatments out of fears they could be prosecuted. This fast-tracked law swiftly passing the state legislature and receiving the governor's signature late Wednesday following mounting pressure for the state to course correct after Alabama's Supreme Court allowed couples to sue for wrongful death when their frozen embryos were dropped and destroyed at a fertility clinic. The new law offers legal protections for fertility patients, doctors, and hospitals, finding they cannot be held criminally responsible if an embryo is destroyed. Any civil damages would be limited to the cost of one IVF cycle. Some clinics in the state say IVF treatments that have been on pause now for three weeks could resume as early as today or Friday with the new protections now signed into law. President Joe Biden will deliver his annual State of the Union address to the nation tonight. Speaking before Congress this evening, the president is expected to discuss the economy, immigration and the foreign conflicts in Ukraine and Gaza. In his address tonight, Biden is expected to make his case for re-election as he will be watched by one of his biggest audiences ahead of the general election in November. His speech comes on the heels of Super Tuesday, where voters further set the stage for a Biden-Trump rematch. You can watch the State of the Union address beginning at 9 p.m. Eastern Time. A jury has found the armorer on the Russ movie set guilty of involuntary manslaughter. It was in October of 2021 when the film's cinematographer was killed after allegedly being shot by actor Alec Baldwin with a prop gun. Now Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, the person overseeing firearm safety on set, faces up to 18 months in prison for the deadly tragedy. Her lawyer saying they will appeal. Alec Baldwin has denied pulling the trigger in the 2021 accidental shooting. He is expected to go to trial in July and has also pleaded not guilty. In the Middle East, there has been a deadly attack on a commercial ship in the Gulf of Aden carried out by the Iranian-backed Houthis. U.S. officials say a missile struck a cargo ship, killing three crew members on board. They are the first deaths reported in a wave of Houthi attacks on ships in the Red Sea that continue despite retaliatory strikes by the U.S. military. New York Governor Kathy Hochul is ordering the deployment of hundreds of National Guard members to the city's subways to protect passengers. NYPD says there's been a wave of violent assaults in the subways. As a result, an assembly of 1,000 National Guardsmen and state police will be stationed across the transit system. They will be monitoring some of the busiest stations in the city and will conduct bag checks searching for weapons. These brazen, heinous attacks on our subway system will not be tolerated. So today in the wake of these latest attacks, I'm unveiling a five-point plan to rid our subways of people who commit crimes and protect all New Yorkers. Finally this morning, the Oakland Athletics are ready to transform the Las Vegas skyline. This week, the A's and their design team unveiled renderings showcasing designs reminiscent of the Sydney Opera House. The new $1.5 billion stadium is set to replace the 67-year-old Tropicana Las Vegas in 2028. The 33,000-seat domed stadium featured an outfield glass window frame to enjoy views of the Strip and the largest video board in Major League Baseball coming in at 18,000 square feet. 
A's owner, John Fisher, explained that opting for a non-retractable roof on their new stadium enables year-round use for various events. The $1.5 billion stadium price tag includes $380 million in public financing. Construction will begin next year. These are your top stories for this Thursday. Unbiased, straight facts, that's straight arrow news. We'll see you back here tomorrow. Until then, I'm Kara Rucker. Have a great day.